Hello everyone and welcome back. Holy crap, it's been a long while now uh, since I've done a review. And uh, this is one of these models that I've actually wanted for quite some time. Especially after Eagle Moss went belly up. And thanks to Real Merch, which acquired a lot of Eagle Moss's stock. You know, I was able to get my hands on this thing at retail. And I'm very happy about that because this is one of the stations that I really, really wanted. And uh, it finally showed up after having ordered it at the end of January. Here we are nearly two weeks later. It's finally here. And as you can see, I have a model and a magazine. So I'm going to put this box with the model in it aside and get to the gloriousness of the magazine first. All right, folks, and there is the magazine. Uh, it was a little bit bent up because it was inside that plastic bag that some of these specials uh, used to come in. So I had to get it out and kind of straighten it out. But nevertheless, the regular one special issue with a nice CG rendering of the station on the cover there. It looks pretty good. Uh, with some basic information down at the bottom. Now, most people think of this as regular one. And uh, if you really want to get technical about it, it could be considered the orbital office from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And even though it's probably more famous because of regular one, I like to think of it as Starbase 375 because I'm a big Deep Space Nine fan. Or Starbase, I think it was 257, also on Deep Space Nine. And it's appeared in various guises on The Next Generation. And I think that's about it. So yeah, uh, it's considered a research station active in 2285. And of course, the Genesis Project was developed and perfected here and under the command of Carol Marcus. Turn the page, and like every Eagle Moss magazine before this, the format remains the same with how to attach it to the stand, which should be interesting once I get it out of the box. And a little bit more information is here. Actually, all that information is repeated from the front cover. So I'm gonna skip that and dive right into it. And we have a couple of paragraphs on the station itself and its use with a nice CG rendering, which I think is a repeat of the one on the cover. This one is just at an angle. And here's a section on the designing of regular one. And of course it mentions the orbital office platform or office station from Star Trek, the motion picture and a little bit about that and more on the design process and so on. Uh, you know, as I flipped through this magazine, I was a little bit disappointed because unlike the Defiant or Valiant concept model that I got a while back where they actually showed all of the appearances of the Defiant or something or, or great appear or great Defiant episodes, I guess you could say. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get that kind of thing with this. I would like to have seen at the back of the magazine, perhaps, you know, all the various episodes of The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine where the station model has been reused in some capacity. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you get get some cool images of the original studio model and a lot of text about it. And then the last section of the magazine, which I often call or often used to call the uh, magazine filler. And this is on the visual effects from Star Trek II. Of course, you got the Enterprise model there and all of that concerning the film and the famous Reliant model, which has been reused dozens of times throughout Star Trek's history and some concept artwork there and more lots of text, matte paintings, things like that and more model imagery and concept art and text and then more on that and the Genesis basically a breakdown of the Genesis device the video tutorial from Carol Marcus the briefing I guess 
And that pretty much concludes the magazine. Uh, it's all right. Nothing too, you know, fancy and definitely didn't provide any information that I didn't already know, but still cool to have nevertheless. So yeah, I'm gonna toss this aside and get to the model itself. All right, and I've got the model out of the box and on the stand, I actually purposely mounted it upside down because I wanted to see how it would look as the orbital office. And it looks pretty good. Of course, there are, I would have to make some changes if I wanted to make it more like that, but I, of course, don't have a spare, and I'm probably not going to modify this model. So let me just take it off the stand the way I had it and just kind of show you. And you know what? looks pretty cool. Although after opening the box, I must admit that I was probably a little disappointed in its size in comparison to uh, the space dock or which I never did get that, but I did get the Jupiter station, which, and that thing was huge in comparison to this thing. Uh, the space station K7, which, which was also pretty big comparing in comparison to this. So the size is a little disappointing, but the detail here, I have to admit, is exquisite. Uh, the bulk of the model is, this is plastic. No, 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 maybe not. Yeah, the top dome section is plastic. Of course, the metal is this primary section underneath there. Um, the pods are all plastic. I think this little habitat ring is metal. And of course, these uh, power cores or whatever they are um, is plastic as well. As you can see, it fits into about the palm of my hand. Um, you kind of have to be delicate with it or treat it delicately because of the sensor pods or whatever at the top. And you don't want these to accidentally break off. Uh, my model appears to be in great shape. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a cannon, phaser cannon or something. It looks like one of those turrets uh, for defense um, and of course the opening for shuttlecraft and things like that. Uh, it definitely looks cool. The detail is pretty spot on. Although what's interesting to note, but of course it is not in the film or any of the episodes, is you don't see any insignia on the station itself, which lets you know, uh, you know what particular outpost it is. I mean, clearly looking at it, it looks like it's a Federation starbase. Um, so there's that. And as I'm looking closely or closer, you can see all of these docking ports, which I never noticed that before. All these round cylindrical docking parts, ports, uh, which look pretty cool, I think. And um, I definitely think this makes a worthy model to the collection. You know, of course, getting these things now with Eagle Moss now out of the picture, although I think some other company... Um, I think Master Replicas or some other company will be either picking up where they left off or something. I'm not sure the specifics, even though that may be the case. Uh, still a little bittersweet to get a model after all this time uh, because you just think about how often or how awesome it was to get these kinds of things. Because outside of Eagle Moss, things like this, having this station will never have occurred in years before or years prior. And uh, likely will never happen again. So I'm definitely very grateful and lucky. This model looks pretty good. Quality looks uh, pretty good. Maybe a little basic as far as the paint goes. But then again, that's how it looked on screen. And um, of course, in the, in the movie, we saw it orbiting kind of like that or floating by just barely. Um, yeah, it looks good. My model doesn't appear bent. Nothing broken. Uh, it's definitely got a little weight to it. So uh, hold, putting it onto the stand uh, is not a difficult challenge. It just slides right in there in a the hole like that. Um, the only thing is, is that the weight primarily is in the dome. So your your stand wants to kind of like lean forward. But luckily, if you have it secured in the base, you should not have any problems. Uh, and this one seems to hold up pretty well, though I'm sure if there were an earthquake or something, this thing would topple over. As you can see, it doesn't take much effort to shake this thing up. Um, but yeah, guys, I would highly recommend this model to you. 
on Real Merch's website. It'll run you back about $35, $36, maybe a little, obviously a little bit more with the shipping. Uh, maybe you can catch a discount. If you're interested in getting this model or any others that are still available on there, you might want to you might want to jump on it because uh, these things are disappearing pretty fast because people like me are seeing it as an opportunity to perhaps fill in gaps or holes in their collections or just to get specific ships that they wanted for whatever reason. And uh, rather than, you know, break the bank, I just wanted to get the station and I've always wanted it. And now was the time. So I did it. So, yeah, folks, if you have any questions about it, of course, or comments, drop me a line down below. I'll be happy to respond and or answer whenever I see it or can. Um, this one is definitely worth your bucks or pounds or what have you uh, to get this model to add to your collection. Um, and now that I think about it, I did see a video online somewhere where somebody was able to plop this off, take this off flip it upside down so that it looks like the orbital office and then, you know, display it. Um, I might have to look that up. But yeah, this is definitely one worth, you know, your time and effort. And uh, so definitely recommend it there. And if, you know, <laughs> yeah, this thing is great. No window misalignment. Oh, actually, yes, there is. Oh, interesting. So the window misalignment strikes again. This time for old time's sake. <laughs> so yeah, guys, until next time, live long and prosper. Be safe out there. A lot of craziness out there in this world right now. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of cool. Definitely go and get it if you can, if you don't already have it. I'm new to this particular station, so I'm definitely glad to have it now. Um, and many of you will know that I'm harshly critical of Star Trek Picard or any of modern Star Trek. But I have to tell you, so far, season three is pretty good. I have seen the first few episodes and I'm pleasantly surprised. Of course, it's still a little too dark for my taste. But, um, you know, I can see... It feels like Star Trek, but it's like going home again, but only for a short while. So yeah, guys, until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you later.